Hi guys and welcome back. Hi guys, welcome back to Couch Critics. I'm Lamia. This and is my friend Ruby. Yes, hi. Today we're reviewing the movie The Fall Guy. Mm -hmm. But before we start, I want to say that we're matching today and I feel like this whole week we've been just thinking the same about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the story. Mm -hmm. I went to the movie theater. It's one of the least like visited movie theaters in Montreal <laughs> in my opinion. I went there. The only people who go there are it's us, us with their <laughs> clients we're yeah. their like their whole client base i don't know how they're even like still working like uh, what money do they make <laughs> no right i have no idea and it like even the tickets are so cheap like yeah. it, it's insane but we're not gonna give you the name of it we're, we're, we're keeping it a secret we're, yeah sorry for gatekeeping but <laughs> we also don't want to find strangers following us to the movie theater yeah. oh my god <laughs> but um, I went there, I was watching The Fall Guy. I got into the movie theater. First of all, they gave me the ticket to room four. I get into room four, the screen is black, no movie is playing. And I then I went and I thought the movie was starting at 7.25. On, like, I saw it at 7.25, I don't know mm. how. So I go there and I'm like, it's 7.35 and the movie hasn't started yet. <laughs> so the guy literally just starts the movie for me and I was alone sitting in the movie theater. Wow. And then, yeah. Five minutes in, I see two strangers coming in, <laughs> and what Lemya has taught me during our movie watching is that if you sit in front, you're going to be more immersed in the mm -hmm. movie. So I was sitting really in the front, and then I see two strangers walking, and they keep getting closer and closer, and I'm like, <laughs> come on, guys, the movie theater is empty like go sit somewhere <laughs> far away from me i want to enjoy the movie <laughs> and as they're getting closer i look up and i'm like lemya <laughs> and i did not recognize her because i'm blind and i just i had to let it, literally get super close to her face and be like oh my god ruby it's you what are you doing here <laughs> so yeah we didn't plan it but we ended up watching the movie together yeah it was fun it was very fun i was eating popcorn i, I ordered the popcorn and i'm like oh my god if lemya finds out she's gonna be so disappointed <laughs> No, it's fine. You're a quite stuff. eater. Yeah, I made sure I didn't chew the popcorn. I let it melt. Because yeah, because guys, it's like one of my biggest pet peeves to like have people eat next to me at the movie theater because I have this theory. I think that like when you're watching something and you're like, especially in a movie theater, like when it's pitch dark and like you just you don't even hear yourself eat and you're not focused with the food, you just tend to chew louder. Yeah. And it, it just drives me insane. So yeah, that's true. But I tried my best not to. So. No, you were good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our small anecdotes mm -hmm. on The Fall Guy. That being said, I had very low expectation for the movie. I had no expectation for this movie. I just yeah. was, I wanted to get through it. And I was very su surprised because I loved it. It yeah. was such a fun movie. Yes. And it definitely exceeded my expectations. Same. And I mean, it is a comedy slash action movie. And mm -hmm. it has a bit of romance. But I just love it. It's like action but, like, most of the action is on set. Like, the explosions you yeah. see, the cars, everything. It's because they're filming an action movie in mm -hmm. the movie. But at the same time, there was a lot of, like, action behind the scenes happening. So, yeah, it was a great movie. Okay, where do we start? Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. I think it helps when you have great actors mm -hmm. to make a great movie. I think if it was different actresses wouldn't have been as successful it's easy for it to turn into a cheesy movie but yeah what did you say, think of their performances i loved it i have been not really liking what uh, emily blunt has been doing lately I, I i wasn't a big fan of oppenheimer she did this movie where they i don't know like this jordan belford kind of movie okay. <laughs> where they she's camped people to like get money anyways didn't really like it and I, I, I weirdly really like this one. Same for Ryan. I watched Barbie. I thought it was okay. But I, everyone said it, it was his best performance when he did Barbie. But I I just didn't see it. Like, I, I, I wasn't convinced. But no. I loved him in this movie. Yes. I think this one was his best performance. Of course, aside from The Notebook. The notebook. Yes, yeah. and La La Land. I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Ryan Gosling, and I know it sounds like a cliche, but hey, like, cute um, Canadian actor. Like, how mm -hmm. can we not like him? 
But actually, my favorite Ryan Gosling movie is Blue Valentines, which is... I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's not... I don't know. I accidentally like came across uh, from it a few months back. And okay. it's a very heartbreaking movie. And it's one of the few movies where I feel like Ryan really like went out of his way for a role. It's a heartbreaking movie. So, yeah. But I think he always does a great job. And I think that the thing... I think Ryan's strength is just him being this very laid back actor like in most of his movies it seems like he's the guy who doesn't care about anything and that mm-hmm. and even in the notebook he's he yeah. cares but at the same time he's i don't know i don't know how to describe him but i just it's it's a bit like the fall guy he has this attitude mm-hmm. where he cares about the people but he has a very laid back approach to no his shadows. life in general. yeah no shadows exactly that's it so yeah anyway Love the cast. I think that his uh, casting type is has been for the past years. You know, the lover, the cute guy next door. Uh, that's the like when you think of Ryan Gosling, that's what you think of. You think of The Notebook. You think of La La Land. And I think that the roles that he's been choosing lately are an anti cast because, like, when you think of his role in Barbie and th- th- this movie Fall Guy. It's not his casting type, like yeah. the awkward, weird guy who doesn't have, who, who, who's not the it guy, isn't something that he's being cast on generally. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. In this movie, he was not the it guy. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. But, but but as you said, there is this nonchalance about his personality as Ryan Gosling. Yeah. And it's you could definitely see it on screen when he plays these normal guys who do these awkward stuff. (laughs) I keep saying it, but really in order to be a good actor, you have to know who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And once you know that you can like play with your own personality and try to adapt it to the role and great performances come out of it. And for Emily Blunt, um, I felt like her acting was the same throughout the entire movie. And at first, I did not really enjoy it because I couldn't see many shades. Like, uh, when she was mad or sad, she would keep the same tone as if when she's happy. And when I re-thought about it and when I I, uh, reflected on the movie, I think that it's hard to keep the same tone. And so I'm still thinking if I liked it or not. I think her role in this, her character in this movie was the seemingly naive person who actually is very smart and has a kind heart. And mm-hmm. this is why her like reactions were not always too like raging or anything. Yeah. So I think, um, I think that's maybe what she was rooting for. Uh, but the thing that I really liked about her performance is the way she was quiet. Because when I think of Emily Blunt, I always think about The Devil Wears Prada. And I'm thinking... Was she in The Devil Wears Prada? Yeah, she was the first assistant. She was uh, Miranda Priestly's right hand. I have no memory of that. Yeah. I haven't seen it for a while, yeah. since a long time. She was the mean girl in The Devil Wears Prada. And okay. She had this British accent and she was like very strict and like even her tone was different. Okay. And in this movie, her tone was completely like quiet, calm, and mm-hmm. again, different from The Devil Wears Prada. And I think that that's a nice specter. Like she has mm-hmm. a good specter of voice range, everything. So yeah. Have you seen Oppenheimer? Yes, not completely. I wasn't really focused while watching it. I watched it in a plane. I was half oh, asleep. <laughs> it's hard decision. enough to watch it in yes. a movie theater. Yeah, I cannot imagine what it's like to watch it in yeah. a plane. I don't. I, I don't know what happened last summer, and I don't get the hype about Barbie versus Oppenheimer. I think both movies were bad. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the secret of like good marketing. They just sold yeah. it so well. People were anticipating for this mo- for these movies for six months before they even came out yeah and like the did you see the pictures of margot robbie when she went to watch oppenheimer she had like this picture with the tickets and then the guy the lead in oppenheimer uh, the really famous guy uh, thomas shelby what's his name he went to see barbie and he took the same picture that margot took and it was such a it was great marketing yes. yeah 
genius. Expensive marketing. Expensive marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, I've been thinking about some things lately. I, I was wondering, like, is this movie good or is it good because we could relate to a lot of things in this movie? Like, for example, the chaos of being on a movie set. Like, I don't, I don't think that normal people, not normal people, we are normal people too. But um, I don't think that people who never experienced the chaos of being in a movie set can enjoy it as people who have set a foot in a movie set. We have a very limited experience on movie sets, but we've been to a few. And um, I think it's very relatable. Yeah. And it's very chaotic, but it's also the most magical place in the world, in my opinion. It's true. No, I totally agree with it. Mm. And yes, it does give you this behind the scenes of what it's like being on, on a movie set. And you saying this reminds me of this one seat, uh, scene in the movie where like some explosion went out by accident. And um, Emily Blunt, her character was like, oh, no, like we were supposed to use this for the scene, but oh my God, the frame is great. Look at this angle. And I was like, it's, it's such an artistic and a director thing. Like they're just so immersed in their art. They don't realize that she just wasted like probably a few thousand dollars, yeah. if not more, just because the explosion went out at the wrong time. I had so many deja vu moments watching yeah. this movie because I used to do a lot of background uh, work last year and um, the first thing that really made me laugh was when uh, Emily was with her first ass assistant her AD and like she was just she was being nice and she's very quiet and everything and the AD was just losing it screaming at everyone and I feel like that this is how it usually works like the director he never talks to the people who work on set he, yeah. he literally just talks to the actors you have normally two ADs from yeah. what I saw usually. One who talks to the background and you have the other one who talks to the technicians. And one of them, like, I think they're just hired to scream at yes. people. Yes. And like, nobody cares. No one takes anything personally from yeah. what I see. And I saw so many people scream at each other. And by the end of the day, everything was fine. You can't take it seriously because... Mm. I don't know. It's it's part of, it's part of it. It's part of the whole yeah. being on movie. And sometimes they're just screaming because there's so much happening, and you want to be heard at the same time. But yeah, and I think there is something that 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 like explains why people would tolerate that chaos. Because I had this conversation with the this person that I met on the last set that I was on as a background actor, and um, we were, I was just like mesmerized by everything that I saw, like, and I was having so much fun, and I was exhausted, but like, I, I could literally stay there forever, not even, they didn't even have to pay me, I, just, I was just grateful to be there, and the person who was with me, she, 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 like, she was just so tired and didn't appreciate anything because she, she, she wasn't a movie lover like if you are on a movie set for any other reason other than like the fact that you love movies and that you're not even love movies that you you are extremely passionate about the art of making movies it's hell like if, if you have any other reason yeah. to be there it, yeah. you're not you're not gonna tolerate the abuse <laughs> it's long hours it's tiring there's a lot of like time where you have nothing to do as a yeah. background actor but the magic of it and i haven't been on like movie sets as much mm -hmm. as you but i remember the first time i went and i heard the director scream three two one actions <laughs> cameras lights and all of it it's just i don't know if you love it you feel in your elements you can't yeah. not be happy when you're in that environment and also the feeling of being part of something yeah. even if you are the smallest part is astonishing just working towards something you don't even know what the movie is about or what it what, what would would it look like but that that feeling of of like being in a team and and like working together to make something is priceless i think yeah. one of the most relatable things also is you know ryan's character and especially when he talks to this producer and she's like you know um no one will notice if you leave the set because you know you, you're you're the 
stunt guy. Stunt guy, so you could leave. And um, I, I, I felt that because, you know, when you're doing background, you do feel like a prop. Yeah, <laughs> like a literally. Prop. Literally, yeah. yeah. And you're so grateful to be there. Yeah, because yeah. you're useful. I mean, without you, props are important too, you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think it's a matter of time. I think you become more valuable in the second scene mm -hmm. where they need you to do the exact same thing. <laughs> if not, they're going to have to repeat the first take. But yeah, it's it's magic. And that's also what the movie is about. This whole movie is just to give homage to the stunt people. Yeah. And it's because the director who uh, made this movie was actually a stuntman for a very long time before and he started directing. Speaking of the director, uh, um, it's the same director as Bullet Train. And it's the same director as Atomic Blonde. And yes. Oh, yeah. wow. That's insane. And in the beginning of the movie, they showed scenes of uh, of like his previous movies talking mm -hmm. about how it's important to be a stunt people. And all of the scenes were from of stunts from his movies. And I just think it was it was incredible. But yeah, he does a lot of comedy, like uh, action movies. And it was nice to see him add comedy to mm -hmm. these action movies for but bullet train was funny too uh, okay i also I watched it in a like <laughs> <laughs> it had the same tones as okay. this movie and i love the action overall it's not violent and it doesn't take too much space in the movie and it, and it's so well coordinated yeah. and yeah the music is great too the casting is always on point i mean bullet train has bad bunny it brad has pitt. brad pitt um post malone was on it too oh yeah yeah whoa they had like a whole boy band ready to go and the the the, the same actor aaron taylor johnson oh he was also on bullet train. he was on bullet train yeah i really like that actor i think he has a very wide range mm. of movies he was in anna yeah. Karenina. he was in avengers and, and i he... never know that it's him yeah he's he has he doesn't great... look like himself <laughs> that's true yeah. yeah but yeah he has such like big movies but we don't like i don't hear like he's not talk. famous enough. Yeah, it doesn't, I think his PR team needs to do more work. Yeah, <laughs> just put him on more red drama. carpets <laughs> and more celebrity drama, drama <laughs> scandals. <laughs> We'd be a divorce. <laughs> yeah, we should be their advisors. We, we should, should hire, hire us. us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I do. Do you think this movie was making fun of Dune? See, you said it, and ever since, I couldn't unsee it, and I don't know. I, don't I mean, they used the Dune song. The yes. Ah, nah, nah. Yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> and the aliens, and like the... And the colors. Yes. And um, the moment that you realize that, you start imagining Timothée Chalamet as uh, <laughs> the Aaron Johnson's character, and you're like, I can see this. Can <laughs> and see this is a being... great movie. <laughs> I can see Tim being a diva. <laughs> and then, like, you see the director seeing this and making a movie about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was it watching Dune and, think, like, literally thinking of him, like, to himself, what was it like to be on the to set of Dune set. and, yeah, yeah, making a movie about what it would be like. And, of course, they, I don't think that if it was really Dune-inspired that they would use the same characters and... But yeah. they did hint at yeah. Dune. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I think it was genius. <laughs> it was hilarious because of how seriously everybody took their job, which they should, yes. Yeah. But it's looking on the outside, I do understand if someone has nothing to do with the acting industry, they would ask themselves, why are you taking it this seriously? It's just the movie. But, but it's not. Guys, it's not even comedy. This is exactly what it looks yeah. like in real life. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's on the acting industry. <laughs> that's on the acting industry. It's it made me think of this um, Damien Chazelle movie also, uh, Babylon. You watched Babylon. Yes. And yes. The, the part where uh, Margot asks... Diego, she's like, if you could be anywhere in the world, where would it be? And he goes like a movie set, yeah. Out of all the places, and then he goes to a movie set, and it's yeah. the most chaotic job yeah. ever. And he's just running around. He almost gets shot, and like people try to kill him, but he's he's just so happy and grateful to be there. Okay, hold on, just 
refresh my memory. Didn't someone die on set in the movie? Yeah. Because of her yeah. <laughs> It was a background actor. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not very relatable <laughs> in I mean, this day and age. Thank God for the conventions that yeah. protect our rights. But it could have happened if you didn't have rights. <laughs> Oh my god. god. <laughs> but we love it. We do. We do. <laughs> um who else was in this movie? Um hmm. I don't know who the producer was, but I think she did a great job in her role. She was the mean uh, yeah, the the yeah. woman who <laughs> manipulated yeah. everything. I think she was genius. Like she was like, "Oh, everything's under control." And I don't know, just her way of talking was amazing. Mm-hmm. There was the girl from Everything Everywhere All at Once, right. the Asian yes. actress. Yeah, she was an AD, right? Yeah, yeah, and she was great. I, I love her, and she, she's. I wish she had a bigger part because she's such a good actress. You have to watch that movie, yeah. and you need to see her audition tape for Everything Everywhere All at Once because it's like the most amazing audition tape okay. ever. All right, and, noted. Yeah. Also, um. I love how there are more and more movies that are being filmed in Australia. Do you think there is a reason for that? I think maybe it's, it's getting cheaper to like... Yeah, maybe it's like Montreal. It's yeah. just cheaper to film there. But right, I, when I saw the Sydney Opera House, all I could mm. think about is uh, uh, Sydney Sweeney's movie. Elvis uh, was filmed too there. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Mm. I think you've told me that, but I just forgot. Yeah. It, some movies try to make it obvious, but like... El- since Elvis was supposed to be in the States, they, they didn't hint at that. It's like with Scream. They filmed it here, yeah. but they wanted it to seem like New York. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Scream. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was you were a background <laughs> actor in it. Yeah. I literally just went to watch the movie to see Lemia's shadow walking. In the I background. appeared for like five seconds. Yeah. Not even. Like maybe three. Maybe okay. three. And like you could only see my silhouette from afar and... Mm. Ruby was screaming at the yeah, movie I was like, oh my like, It's God. my friend. It's like, yes, it's here, the actress. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Chaotic. I just love it. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, like, out of, like, the hundred people who were there on that day, I'm happy to be one of the few who, who made, made the it. Cut. Who yes. made the cut. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I feel special. Because yeah. you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more to add? I don't think so. Um, I would love to see more Ryan Gosling movies. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Emily Blunt, very charismatic. She has this je ne sais quoi yes. that just makes her very cool. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's so fun to see her career develop because she's been there for like. 20 mm. plus years and they're still out there and they're still acting and i think that these actors are really defying the age norm because we used to yeah. think that all oh, your career ends when your 20s are over and it's just not yeah true. I, I wanted to talk about this too about how age appropriate yeah the roles were yeah and like i feel like brian and emily are kind of the same age yeah. and they usually like ben Batchley from gossip girl was talking about this on his podcast he's like if i'm being cast for it's something Along these lines, if I'm being cast for a guy who plays, uh, who's uh, 30 years old, I know that my co-star is going to be much younger because this is just the reality of Hollywood. And I don't think it's fair because it's not very representative to have like uh, these lead guys who, in this lead, I can't speak, to have these lead guys in these lead roles who play uh, those characters who are in their 30s 40s and then you have like an actress who is in her 20s yeah and who's supposed to be 30 in the movie or even 40 yeah i totally agree also it's very realistic because for someone who wants to be a director if Mm -hmm. you're starting from scratch you're probably not going to make it until you're 30 if you're lucky or even 40 and that was emily's month's age in the movie and it makes so much sense and it's realistic and it gives you hope it's lowers the pressure on our generation to think that we have to do everything and achieve all of our goals in our 20s. It's yeah. a good reminder that you have to take your time to enter your career and you can make it like further on in life and not just 
in your and opinion. also if like the reason that they choose younger actresses is looks like i mean emily blunt is gorgeous flawless beautiful like, uh, love it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. no i totally agree mm-hmm. and i i also liked the the decast they they did at the end for the real fall guy yes yeah yeah like the stunt the actual real stunt yeah. guy and mm-hmm. I feel like stunt guys are underappreciated, like yes. in general. But like, also like, you're, they're not supposed to be the famous ones. But yeah. true, yeah. But they take all the hits. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, yeah. So I think that sums it up for the fall so. guy. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Go and watch it if you haven't already, and let us think. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>